Hello, and welcome to Rita's Paper Motif. I'm Rita, and um, today I wanted to share with you um, some different ways to use our beautiful, artistic, decorative masks. Now, before we do that, I just want to quickly remind you that um, any comments you want to share, you can do so in the comment section. If you want to shout out hello, that's great. Um, hitting the like buttons uh, obviously is um, quite a compliment. So if you're watching here on uh, Facebook Live, all of those uh, encouragements apply. If you're watching on YouTube, then I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified of any new content that I upload. Okay, so I did tell you that I want to share some ideas using these decorative masks, and we're going to do that today. I also want to tell you how excited I am to be doing this live today. It's going to be a two-part uh, series, so today being part number one, and then on Thursday, part number two. And that's just because I have these ideas that I want to share so that you get... Uh, a variety of ways that you can use these masks. And so let's talk about the masks. First of all, you can find these masks by going to our, um, let me see, right here. Um, so this is uh, page 136. And you can see the masks right here. Um, they're made out of mylar, uh, the material is mylar. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take these out so we can talk about it. This, um, where is that, here it is. Okay, so the material that these are made out of is obviously um, flexible. And it has like a real smooth, shiny side on one side and a little more of a textured side on the other. I always choose to use the textured side up, and that is, um, I just feel that I get a better, when I'm using my blending brushes, I get a better inking that way. Um, I don't think that there's a hard, fast rule, so however you might use it is probably fine. Now, um, I think that these are overlooked in our uh, catalog. I will tell you that they are $10 a package, and in this particular package, um, you get five different masks, and we're going to look at that as well. So, just wanted to share that with you. Um, I like to collect these masks um, because they offer so many alternatives uh, for those decorative layers on our cart. And so let's just take these out so that we can look at them. Um, so there is one design, and let's see, here is another design. So you'll see this is kind of like a square design, and then this is more of a plaid or butcher block um, design. And then this is kind of like a, a deco, art deco kind of um, a design, it, um, and then uh, this is more like a lattice design, so it has more space for your ink to live. And then, of course, there is this mask as well. Now, I like this mask because out of this mask, you can get four different ways to use it. You could use this part of the mask, and you know, if you wanted to use this as a design on your card, you could definitely um, just get your blending brush and the uh, ink color of choice and you could just uh, use that to create um, your card layer. You could also, this comes, when it comes to you, it comes like that. You could also, um, you know, use this square part right here. So that's another option. Um, so it's really up to you. And then it also has this little insert right here. Now the great thing about it is if you're doing a, um, if you're creating a layer and you want to this to be to protect 
that the original color of your layer. So for example, I usually use basic white. So if I wanted to put this down before I start using uh, another mask, I can do that. And then when I take off my mask, I'll have a white um, space there and I can use that to put my sentiment. So either one of these you could use in that way. Now I did also want to share with you how I store my masks and so let's talk about that um so when i'm gonna kind of zoom out here so we can uh get a better view so i don't this is a old album photo error i i got it but um i don't use it for anything else i so uh, I am going to use it to store my masks. So what I do is, you know, these little photo albums have these uh, pages, these plastic pages to protect your photos. So when you do a scrapbook, um, these come in handy because when people are flipping through, they don't get the oils from their skin on your photo. But for this particular reason, our particular way that I use this photo album is I go ahead and stick a uh, stronger piece of cardstock inside and then I just put my masks on one on each side so that I can see the design and then that way as I um, collect my masks then I can always see um, you know what they look like so your masks can come in different sizes. Most of the time they come in a six by six. Um, sometimes this particular, these two masks came in a paper pumpkin. So they are a different, so a, a four by four. Um, and then you have some layering masks as well. And then just some different designs. So I just go ahead and store them in, um, this photo album, obviously I need to get some more pages to put those in there. But what I like about this is it keeps my masks, um, they're not at risk of being bent. Now while I feel that this material is, is very durable, um, I don't know about the memory. If something was on top of them and they um, kind of bent them down would we have a fold in them I don't know I don't even want to know actually but this is a great way for me to store them because then I can sit this in my um, shelf and I always know where my masks are all right so let's move on so I did want to tell you that the this particular mask these particular masks do come in the size of four and seven eighths by six and three eighths. So when you're creating a layer, um, for example, here's a, a layer I created using the butcher block. It's not, uh, it, it, it can fit. You can cut your basic quite uh, layer so that it fits. Um, but most of the time my layers are, um, I cut them either at four by five and a quarter or three and three fourths by five. And so sometimes when you cut these just to fit uh, your mask, this one doesn't, you'll see that there's room on the bottom and room on the top. Um, you're going to be, if you cut it to fit this, uh, for an A2 size, you're gonna have to cut this down, right? So if you were making a five by seven card, then your size of your layer is obviously gonna be different. But if you're using an A2 size or making an A2 size card, then you're gonna to have to manipulate your um, mask so that it looks kind of the same on the top as it does on the bottom, because if not, then you're gonna end up with something like this. And you may or may not like how that looks. And um, you could cut it down, but you're going to start losing real estate with your basic white. So just keep that in mind, and I'm going to we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But I'm going to move these aside so we can get going. Um, and I just wanted to show you some um, obvious ways. So I did use this. Um, 
I wanted to get it out so I sh can show you. So I did use this mask along with some uh, sweet sorbet, and I created this layer. Um, so that's what that looks like. I didn't, I haven't finished the card, obviously. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. I did layer it with some black and then some white. And then, of course, I would put white for the message in here as well. But you can see how this would look. Now, you control the uh, intensity or the darkness or lightness of the ink uh, that's in your control. So obviously, the more ink you put on there, the darker it's going to be. Uh, so here's one example, and here's an example where I did the, basically the same thing. Once I was finished with something that looks like this, I did take my blending brush, I removed the mask, took my blending brush, and added color on top of here just to give it just a different look. So just some samples there that I wanted to show you. Now, um, I'm going to put these to the side. But um, I wanted to show you um, this design, and I'm going to talk about how um, this design, uh, I'm going to show you the finished card, and I'm going to talk about this design. So when I am working with my mask, I like to protect my grid sheet here because um I like to have a clean one, and so um, keeping that clean is um, a big thing for me. And um, also, I, I want to be able sometimes to move this. So I like to find either maybe a piece of white copy paper or even sometimes the chipboard that comes with your designer series paper. This came with something else, but it's um, nice and sturdy. And then I can put my a piece of basic white on here. Now this basic white is going to be four by um, five and a quarter. And then I don't want this moving around when I put my uh, masks down. So I'll take some painter's tape. I'm trying to use this up. You can use whatever, um, you know, if it's the pink tape or or whatever you want to use just so long as um, you can remove it from here and it doesn't tear your paper. So I'm just going to stick it here as uh, straight as I can. And then what I did with this is I actually used two different masks. I used this mask and then I used that one that I seem to like a lot, this one. And here's how I put them. I try to center um, this so that I have design on both sides and top and front, or top and bottom. And then I'll take some of this uh, green painter's tape. You could use the blue. I think there's some yellow that's called frog's tape. And sometimes this tape is not friendly with me. It when it tears sometimes it uh, doesn't tear in the full square but I don't know if I'm going to be fighting with this or just move on I'm just going to move on um, hopefully I can get to the, there we go so I'm just going to tear some off and I'm going to secure my uh, mask right up here and I don't have any white, basic white showing through, so I can use that to my advantage, and we'll just um, tape that on here. Now, because I'm gonna be using two of the masks, I want this mask to, um, and I'm feeling for the shiny side, I want this mask to, uh, to lay right on top of the other mask so that it will be straight. Ask me how I know that that's important. All right, and so now I have the option to go ahead and, uh, you know, fold this mask down and then use this mask. And then I would take my blending brush. We have these blending brushes in my online store. They come in a package of three. And I just store mine in this flower pot. I have one for each color family, so one for the reds, one for the yellows, one for the blues, 
and etc. So I would just take the one for the reds as I did here, and I would just take my uh, sweet sorbet and ink it up, and then I just put some ink distant uh, because this is this was my project, so you can make yours however you wanted. But I wanted some sweet sorbet on the bottom left hand corner and on the top right hand corner, and so I just um, with my blending brush, went ahead and uh, put the ink on here. And then I wanted something different that I don't do very often, is I wanted to use my Memento Black, and I wanted to do that Butcher Block. So again, um, I took an inking tool, and I am gonna tell you that I didn't use um, a blending brush with that I was grabbing for that. Here it is. I didn't use a blending brush with the black, and I'll tell you why. Um, because I don't usually use black with my blending brushes. So I took a tool that I have in my drawer. I've had this for a very long time. These are great because they have, oh, I'm trying not to get ink on my hand. Um, they have this pad that's Velcroed that fits on the top here. And so I can take it off and uh, wash it. But this is designated just for the black. And so I did um, go ahead and flip this uh, layer up, this decorative mask up. And then I just went with my memento. Um, you can also do, which is what I suggest you do, is just flip that layer, that mask up and put this one down so that you're not going through so many layers. And I just, um, with my inking tool, just blended that color and this is what I got so this was the beginning I'm going to take these off now because I just wanted to show you how I got this um, this was the beginning of my, the card that I was making and so I wanted to just kind of share with you these um, fractured cards that's what these are called are really popular right now and so I took this that I had created and I cut a two by two square which will house my sen sentiment and I just put it right here. You can see that that square is turned so that it's diamond shaped. And then I went ahead and stamped um, the word hello and I got that hello from, um, this was a celebration uh, stamp set and it's called uh, Heartfelt Feelings. And so um, that's what I stamped in the middle and then I just cut some, whoa, I'm falling apart here, sorry. I cut some strips, black strips, uh, and these strips measure a quarter of an inch. And I just uh, started putting them around that diamond shape. So I would uh, butt them up to this side here, so it starts right here. That would be glued down. And then you would take the next one, and just butt that up to the end, um, up to the uh, square, the sentiment square, and go ahead and glue that down. And then you just kind of keep going. This is a little bit wider, but I was just using it to show you. And um, then I would glue that like that. And then the very last strip, um, just like this. And what that does is it fractures, uh, creates that fracture effect on your card. And then once you've got them glued on, then you can just flip your card over and you cut off the excess so that you have that card. And then, um, of course, you can, you know, whatever colors you use, you would could choose whatever you want. But then that gives you this fractured card. And um, then on the inside, I did just take that uh, mask and I just did a little more of that butcher block uh, effect there. But um, yeah, so these fractured cards are really uh, popular right now, but I did use the decorative masks to create that. So uh, just some ideas I wanted to give um, to you. Now today I wanted to create with you um, some cards here. This is the uh, what we'll do together and we're gonna use those masks. I'm just trying to clear some room here uh, and Make sure we're all in line. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you what you need. 
So you're going to need um, a half a sheet of the basic white. So this is 11 and a half, uh, and then the eight and a half was right here, and I cut it at four and a quarter. So this measures four and a quarter by 11. And then, um, of course, we would take our trimmer and we would just score it in the middle at five and a half. So I'm gonna turn it this way so I can see it and also keep it in your view. So we'll just, um, and we'll use the uh, light or the gray blade and that will score it right in half for us. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the trimmer away. Hope I did everything else. And then we'll just take our bone folder and just secure that. So now that's pretty much ready. You're also going to need an envelope. So this is a leftover envelope from um, a paper pumpkin. And so I'm going to be using Gorgeous Grape, so this is perfect for that. So I'll just use up this envelope. And then we're also going to need, I didn't want to show you the card just yet. Um, I, I did go ahead and use my punch, and this is the, um, label me lovely punch and so i really like that design and so i cut one out of white and i did go ahead and stamp it um i did not stamp it sorry so this is the white we'll stamp our uh, sentiment here and then i did go ahead and punch out two of these same labels in the gorgeous grape um and of course you can find this in the online uh, catalog and then, of course, I'm going to have my white, basic white uh, layer here. And then this is gorgeous grape. So this is going to fit on here. But you can tell that they're the same size, and that's okay because I'm going to be cutting it down. But let's get started with what we're going to do. I'm just going to put these back in that envelope because um, that plastic envelope because what we're going to do next is we are going to. Um, the thing that we're going to do is is going to need to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and do what we um, do when we're beginning to use our masks. And that is we're going to secure this basic white so that it doesn't move around. There's I just made a little donut uh, with that. Um, frog tape or green tape and then I'm going to use I have to tell you this is I, I just I guess it's just one of my favorites and I'm going to line this mask up and I'm looking so that I get design all the way now obviously I'm going to have to cut this down but however when I cut it, I don't want to have to worry about one side has a, a white gap in the other or the bottom or top. So this way, I'll have design all the way. And I'm going to take some more of that tape. And I'm going to start taping this down because I don't want my mask moving. And I don't need a whole lot of tape. But um, sometimes I can get zealous <laughs> when I'm moving around my uh, blending brush. And so I'm gonna take the blending brush that I use for purples because I'm gonna use some gorgeous grape ink. And here it is. And I'm also going to grab a piece of uh, white copy paper. And I, I'll show that, I'll, sh I'll share why in just a minute. So we're gonna just, uh, Want to make sure there's a no um, purple ink on here. And I do that before I start inking up just because we want to do that. We don't want to have two different colors competing here or, or um, compromise our ink. So I'm just going to take my blending brush and get some uh, gorgeous grape on here. 
Now I can move this however I want because everything is secure. So I'm gonna make that work for me. And um, I'm gonna take a little bit of that ink that I have on here, this gorgeous grape, and I'm just gonna kinda tap it off a little bit here because I don't want globs of ink on my um, layer here. And so that white layer that I had, I think I told you, I hope you told, I told you, that was four by five and a quarter. And I'm just going to keep putting uh, the Gorgeous Grape ink, move this over a little. Um, on here. And while I'm doing this, I wanted you uh, to share with you um, why I was uh, gone for a while, and that is I had a bout of eczema that I just couldn't get rid of. I've never had anything like that before. And I just, it was on my uh, hands up to my arms, and I just didn't feel comfortable in doing lives um, with that. I did try using some gloves, but really I can't work with gloves on my hands. So, um, so I just took some time off. I was able to, uh, kind of reorganize my studio and uh, just get some plans and do some planning uh, for future videos. So time was not wasted. Now I'm going back to this and I wanted to share with you. It may look, when you first look at this, it may look like we have a lot of ink. I would strongly suggest that you just take a moment to kind of pull this up and you'll see that what you think is a lot of ink on here is probably not. So I know I want a little more and I'm getting ink all over my hands, but let's keep going. So I'm going to keep uh, spreading the ink and I want no white. And what I like about this chipboard is when I'm through with it, uh, it, when it dries, I can use it again. But when I feel like I've kind of used it to the fullest extent, then it can just go in the garbage and I'm done with it. <laughs> Sometimes I like to use this chipboard for folios, so some little um, scrapbooks. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to... Um, rub my brush right here on this white paper to try to get excess ink off. We're going to go ahead and close up this gorgeous grape. We're going to take off our mask. How many of you like the gorgeous grape? I love it. Well, I love purple, so I have to on purpose uh, Lee make plans so that I'm not using uh, purple all the time. And uh, let's see here, we're going to get rid of that tape and I am going to uh, zoom out a little so we can see everything here. Okay, and I'm gonna clean this off because we're gonna use this again and I just don't want to have uh, maybe some ink that uh, will sh will compromise what I've just done. So I have a rag, and um, you could use your chamois. I am just going to clean off that ink, and you can see how much ink is on the mask. And I will do the opposite side as well because when I put it down, I don't want any ink on my, um, I have a lot of water on this rag here. Uh, I don't want a, any ink on my layer where I don't want it. So we'll throw that extra scrap paper away and then I'm going to wipe my mask dry, as dry as I can get it. And I'm gonna get another piece of scrap paper. Okay, so um, 
Also know that the next step that we're going to do, you're gonna want some water near you. Um, uh, when you're creating in your own uh, craft space, you could just get up and go wash it right away. But for video purposes, uh, since my sink is in the other room, uh, and I'm here to share with you, so I don't wanna be leaving. So I did just bring a container of some soapy water. So when I'm finished with this next step, I'm just going to put my mask in here because I don't want what we're going to do to dry on my mask. So um, if you're doing this and you don't want to go directly to your sink, then you are definitely going to want to bring some water in. Now again, we're going to secure this back on the... Um, inked layer that we just did tape you know I've been trying to use up that green tape we um, years ago we did some painting and um, it seemed like we had a lot of uh, tape we actually would misplace it while we're painting and then we'd go buy some more so we ended up with quite a bit but what I'm doing here is I brought this closer to me because I want to make sure um, that I get it um, straight here. So um, that's what I'm doing. Aha, I think I got it. All right, so I think that that's pretty straight. Um, if you're off a little, I don't think it's a big deal for what we're gonna do, but I don't wanna be off a lot. And you'll see why. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some this is called glitter paste. I don't carry it in my online store, but you can get it at any big box store, uh, Hobby Lobby or uh, Michael's. And we're just gonna open it up. Uh, I'm gonna use an old, uh, I have several bone folders and I'm just gonna use that. You can use a pellet knife if you want, um, but this just works better for me. And the fact that I can just put it in the soapy water works good too. So I'm gonna stir it around. Now this gets thick in here. Um, when you first get it, it's not this thick. So um, you just remember, you can see I've used a lot. Just remember to seal it up really good and um, don't leave it open too long. So here we go. I'm just going to take this uh, paste and I'm going to uh, smear it or spread it on top of this mask and I told you that it needs to dry so once we're finished here we are going to let it dry and then um, we'll create a card. Now if it's not dry enough by the time um, we finish our next project then I did already make one so I can show you how that worked. But I'm taking off any excess just because I don't want to waste my paste. But I do want it to get on that layer. And then I'm just going to put it back in the jar. And this is going to go in that bowl of warm water um, so that I don't ruin my bone folder and then I'm finished with this and then we are going to take this mask off and I just throw these tape away I have so much but I don't I don't often reuse it um, but if you um, need to you can I'm gonna say I probably wouldn't with this because you're gonna have that, that paste probably on it and so you can see that this is sticky and this is sticky. And so you can still see that there's some residue on there. So we're going to go ahead and put that in that water. So it's going to be in the water soaking. And then when I'm through here with my video, I will wash it off and we won't have an issue. So that's what that is. Now, um, just wiping up my hands here. I'm gonna take this off so that it can 
uh, dry and I'm going to put it to the side. You can't see anything just yet. It's a little bit hazy, but it needs to dry. So we'll put it over to dry and um, then we're going to move on to our next card while that is drying. Now I'm going to flip this over and um, well, maybe I'll put it to the side. I shouldn't have just put it on there because, oh, okay. I'm going to need to put this here because when I flipped it over, it had some of that residue and I uh, don't want to compromise anything I put here. So um, I'll tell you what you need. I'm using a Mossy Meadow. And again, this is a um, eight and a half by four and a quarter. And then I scored it down the middle. Um, no, I didn't. So we're gonna score it down the middle at four and a quarter. So let's just do that. Okay, and that's with the lighter blade. And then we'll go ahead and fold it in half. And now we have that uh, base of our card. So then what I'm going to do is, um, here is the envelope, so we'll put that to the side. Um, you're going to need some basic white, and I, um, and I did get out some very vanilla, but you can definitely use uh, the basic white. All right, so this is going to be something else that is going to need to um, to dry. So um, let's get with it. So I'm just going to turn that cardboard piece over on on this um, scrap paper here, and I'm going to again um, secure. That um, this is again, this is the four and a quarter by, I'm sorry, not four and a quarter, four by five and a quarter. And um, let's see, I want to get this as straight as I can here. All right. And we're going to use a, a different uh, mask. We're going to use. This mask that has a lot of open space here, and um, I'm going to line it up. Again, I want to make sure I have um, design on both sides, on all four sides, basically. And again. We're going to be uh, using this in a different rate, way. It's not just going to be your ink and uh, blending brush here. So I'm going to go ahead and secure it on all four corners. And something that we're going to use, we're going to take a, this is the big ink block and I'm using uh, this for, I don't hardly ever use this. This is for your big background um, stamps. Um, it's kind of it's kind of hard if you have short, fat fingers like I do. It's kind of hard to manipulate it. So I just use it for this, the background uh, um, stamps. But I'm going to use this today for the purpose that uh, we need to use it for. So I'll put it to this side. I'm also going to take some glue. And this is the one time that my um, habit of using too much glue is not a problem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, squish out some glue right here. Let's see. Well. I'm not going to fuss with this one. I have another um, glue right here. So we'll just uh, put some glue here. Uh, 
And you're probably wondering what in the world is she doing? So just hold on. You're also going to need a sponge of some sort. Now, we don't sell these sponges in my online store anymore. But it did come in a round um, sponge-like thing and I just cut it into pie shapes um, so that I could um, get the most juice out of it. But you could use any a, any sponge, like you could get one at the store, even the dollar store, and just cut it. You don't have to cut it into wedges. You could cut it into squares or circles or whatever you want. Um, but I use this just for this purpose and I don't use this with ink um, just for what I'm using for now. I use this particular uh, piece of wedge. So the other um, slices or pieces that I have of the sponge may have different uh, jobs, but this one is only for gluing. And what we're going to do is we're going to dip it in that glue and um, we're going to dab it on top of this um, decorative mask. I wanna get glue in all those areas that you can see the, the white. And I'm being careful to dab because I'll tell you what, when I was practicing this, if you uh, rub it and that, uh, the frame moves a little bit, you're gonna get glue all over and it's gonna kind of defeat what we wanna do here. So uh, I think I'm gonna need a little more glue. I just want every area to have glue. And it just needs to be tacky. Well, maybe not, here. It just needs to be tacky. It doesn't need to have a lot of glue. Just keep it tacky. Let's see here, I'm just gonna kind of touch it, make sure I got everywhere. I'm also checking to make sure there aren't globs of glue because we don't really want that either. All right, now we're going to let that just kind of dry a little bit. I'm going to um, stick, uh, I can wait for this for a little bit because I'll stick it in water later, um, but I don't wanna wait on this uh, mask because I don't want the glue to dry on it. So we're just gonna take it off. I'm gonna put it in that bowl of water. And then I'm gonna tell you what else you need for this particular um, card that we're making. You're going to need, sorry, I'm drying my hands here. Uh, You're going to need our gilded gold leafing. And it comes in a container like this. You can see I've emptied most of it out. And I'm gonna, I wanted to talk to you about this. This gold leafing um, is found on page 141 in our catalog. So we can go there while we're letting this dry. Um, so I'll move it. Um, we'll go to page 141. And you'll find the um, gold leafing right here. Now this container would last you for a very, very, very long time. And it's a $9. So um, I have a ton of it. Um, and it, this is what I'm going to tell you. And that is you're going to want to empty this into a container. And let me tell you why. When I was practicing uh, my cards for today, I tried to use it directly out of the container. Now, I don't remember having an issue before um, with this. Uh -huh. it always, I, it's always seemed to work just fine. But here's what happened, is that when the air hits this gold leafing, it just expands. If you were to cough, or sneeze, or say there was a fan or the air conditioner comes on. This is so lightweight, you are gonna have gold leafing everywhere. Now, I'm not making this up. By experience, I can tell you that that is a cleanup that's ex extensive. So, plus it's a waste of your gold leafing. So here's what I suggest. I suggest that you take your gold leafing 
put it in a plastic container. Now this, this is those glad, this container is one of those glad plastic containers that you can put your leftovers in. The reason I like this so much is twofold. What we're waiting to tack up uh, fits right in here. And when we do that, we're going to get gold leafing all over. And I'm going to do that right now. I feel like we can do that. So we're just going to take our basic white sheet that we got glue on. And we're going to open this up. And you're going to do this gently. Do not sneeze. Um, and I wouldn't move it around a whole lot because you don't want to create an air pocket that is going to, it'll just poof out of here and be everywhere. But here's what I like about it is that I can put this layer right in here. Now it's going to be a little messy. I guess I can't hope that, right? And then I'm going to lift it up gently. I'm going to be uh, using this paintbrush because I want to get off any extra that I can. And you can see this is what it looks like. So if you were kind of wild with this, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to regret it. But I'm going to tell you that the end thing is gorgeous. So we're just going to go ahead and take the paintbrush and brush off this extra. Obviously, there's a lot of extra on here. And you want to be gentle with that paintbrush if you get going too fast and you get in a hurry again. You're, it's going to defeat the purpose. Plus, you're going to be clean for a while. Um, and also, I'll tell you what, when it gets on the floor and on your carpet and you try to use the vacuum cleaner, there's like a little magnet part on some vacuum cleaners, and guess what? This sticks to. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, I'm just telling you, it's a beautiful product, but the cleanup is intensive. So, uh, Okay, so we're just going to keep brushing this. I just want to get as much off of here before I lay it down so that it's going to be less of a mess. And I want to thank you for tuning in today. Um, if you're watching on your lunch break, I realize if you have to leave, but you can always come back and watch on the replay or you can head on over to YouTube uh, and watch it there too. If you subscribe to my channel, they'll let you know when it's uploaded. You can also head over to Rita's Paper Motif and just hit the button. That probably won't be on there till tomorrow. Okay, so I've got a lot of that extra off and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take um, another piece of white might be more than one because I'm doing this with one hand and I'm going to move this gently I'm going to take these off this is what I'm saying you want to know that this is a messy project but it's worth it so I'm going to Put the lid on there because and uh, because I don't want it coming out and I'm going to start pressing this gold leaf on here just to make sure all the area that had glue now has glue I mean now has gold leafing and again I'm going to press just a little harder on my brush to try and get this excess leafing off because obviously there's quite a bit, right? And you're going to see, I'm gonna just keep doing this for a little bit. I kind of wanted to 
to finish here with this so that you could see it. And I will just start really working on this with my brush. This is why you want to let it tack up because, or dry up just a little, get tacky. You want the glue to get a little bit tacky so that your gold leaf sticks. Now gold leaf can is not just to be used with your frame. So uh, if you're looking for something to have that, uh, you know, you can just add that je ne sais quoi to your um, cards. I really suggest that you check out the gold leafy. Okay, I think we're getting to where I wanna be. Um, and I'm going to try and put this gold leafing back in the container. And I am also going to tap this off. That's kind of a bold move, I can tell you. I'm gonna take that gluey sponge and I am going to tap a little more here and hopefully I can take some of this, some of this and press on here. So, um, let's see. Of course, this is a lie. So, you know, if things can go wrong, that's when they'll go wrong is when you're live. but that's what makes it real. So, although the real part about cleaning up is didn't really have to happen, <laughs> it did happen. That's why I can tell you about the cleanup. Okay, whew, it's kind of messy. All right, so we're going to Go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and tap this off or brush this off. And I'm not gonna to worry too much about the edges because you know what I did. And and um, obviously I can't do this and show you that part, but I'll, but I can, um, I'll show you the finished product. I just can't show you that process. But what I did is I took my, whew, I took this, finished thing here and um, finished layer now it's finished and I took it over to my die cutting machine and I used the um, scallop contour dies and I cut it out it isn't dry enough to be doing that right now anyway. So I am gonna put it to the side and let it finish drying. But I'm gonna show you, excuse my reach, I am gonna show you the finished product. Now, um, remember I told you that I had this, oh my gosh, let me clean up here. Um, I have this little piece of very vanilla. This is also what I would, uh, as soon as I could, run my gold gilded layer through the die cutting machine when it's dry enough and I can do that, then this will become my sentiment strip here. Okay, and I know you're probably gonna see gold flicks, but I really have to do some deep cleaning here. All right, here's what I created. So, um, like I said, I took the dried layer and ran it through. This is the second to the largest um, 
scallop contour die, ran it through, and then I took a, the smaller one. This is a little bit uh, bigger, but I took a smaller, uh, this smaller um, scallop contour die, and I just cut this out of basic white and stamped the Hello Stamp from that um, stamp set I showed you before. The um, heartfelt hello, uh, heartfelt um, hellos, and I just uh, stamped that hello onto the sentiment strip, and uh, I'm still finding that gold leafing, um, and stamped it on here, and then just glued it on here. Now, um, I didn't finish decorating this, um, but you can definitely do that. I didn't think with the gold, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why I decided on those colors. I decided on something, uh, a darker color, like a green or maybe a uh, moody mauve or some color like that. I felt that the gold popped on it. Um, if you put white or even very vanilla, the gold gets kind of lost, right? So it really does pop on the dark. And I do use black for a lot of my, like, Oh, sorry. A lot of my layers on my cards, um, but I just didn't want to use it with the gold. So what I did is I just put the white on here and the gold on here on this is Mossy Meadow, but you could use any dark color would work. And you can decorate it with, uh, you know, I think some buttons, the right color of buttons, maybe some dark green buttons or even some twine would work, some uh, ribbon would work on here. So that is that. And now we're going to uh, finish our other card because I do believe that that layer is dry. And this is the one that we used the um, glitter paste on. And I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can see it. There is uh, a glitter to that ink that we put on here. And so let's go ahead and make that card. Now, um, uh, I did already make one, but I wanted to make one with you. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, we're going to use a card base that is an A2 size card base. And um, I'm using a top folding. This is better, easier for uh, pictures. And I'm going to glue this on the um, gorgeous grape layer, but I'm gonna need to cut this down. And so we're going to take our trimmer and we're gonna cut it to, I'll tell you what, I've got leafing all over the place. Um, we're gonna cut it down to three and three fourths. So, um, whoop. Three and three fourths by five. And this should fit perfectly right on here, and it does. So let's go ahead and attach it. Before we attach it though, I do wanna use some ribbon on here. And um, so I'm gonna put the ribbon on this right here. And so I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm going to take my tear and tape. It's always kind of a chore to find the edge of that. I love this tear and tape. Um, well, here it is. And I'm just going to cut just a little bit because um, what that's going to do is it's going to hold my ribbon. So I'm going to leave that right like that. I want, uh, I'll see where I want that ribbon. I kind of want it a little more toward the bottom. And I'm going to 
just put my tear and tape here. I don't need to take the back off. I'm gonna go ahead and secure that. So that'll keep my ribbon in place. And then I'm gonna do the same over here. And this ribbon is, um, I'm using it up. So any purple ribbon, well, it depends on whatever color your, um, your layer is, right? Um, so any of any color that you've chosen for your layer will determine the color of the ribbon. And so we're going to just put it like that. So now you see that my ribbon is secure here. There's a little bit of leeway here. Wasn't quite straight. Okay, so then I am going to glue this layer right here on my gorgeous grape. And I am using the a liquid glue just because uh, it gives me a little bit of time to uh, manipulate this uh, layer and make sure that I have it as um, centered as I can. And then we're gonna put it right on, on here. So, let's see here. Now, I wanted to make this an Easter card. Um, and Easter is at the end of March, right? Very first part of April. Okay, so I am now going to, I have uh, I'm pulling out those little um, from the uh, Label Me Lovely Punch uh, punch, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment on here. So um, I'm just going to stamp Happy Easter I did have the hello out, but let's get um, Happy Easter out. So let's see. Okay, and... Okay, and we'll get our gorgeous grape. We're going to just go ahead and stamp that. So tap, 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 we're gonna get it in the middle. I have to bring it closer. And there we go. We will clean that off. Now what I'm gonna do, and the reason that I did these two is if I put this white uh, stamp sentiment on this purple you can see that they're the same size so I'm going to offset it a little bit uh, and then I'm going to use two of the gorgeous grape um, labels just to give it a little bit of shadow of purple and um, see here so on the sides it gives it I want to make sure that this is kind of even here okay so you can see that there's purple um, you know all around are on both sides and I'm just going to put it right here before I do that though I want to cut a little bit more of that ribbon because um, I want to do like a faux bow. So let's see here. So just a little bit. And I'm going to stick this ribbon right up here. Boy, with that glitter paste, you could feel the um, elevation on here. 
Let's see. You also can see how that is stuck down there. And if that happens, there we go. I was gonna see if that happens, just cut yourself a bow, just make yourself a bow. Gosh, I'm fumbling here. Might have been easier just to make a bow. All right, and so we're just going to tie one knot. There's a lot going on in this card, and um, so we can, um, you know, just do some simple things here. Um, you can move this a little bit. And then when you tie it tight and you compress it down, it will stick to um, that glitter. And then some um, dimensionals. And you know how much I like those dimensionals. So I don't scrimp on them. That, I always say it, that machine at the post office is not your friend so um, you want to just remember that and i'm going to go ahead and cut on some of the sides because i'm going to use all of this and put one right in the middle all right now we're going to just take off the release paper here um you could use your um Pick and uh, take a pick tool if you wanted to, but I'll just do that. Okay, and then we're going to just um, put our happy Easter sentiment on here. And then I'm gonna bring all of those cards back so you can see what all we've created. I've got a little, what I created here is kind of a mess, but all right, so there's these two. One I made before that's perfectly dry. Um, and you could put, like I said, you could put your, um, any kind of glue dots you wanted on there. You could decorate it. I think that'd be great with some, well, yeah, it'd be great with some of those brushed butterflies if you have them. That would be perfect. And then here is the card we made with the gilded uh, gold leafing. And then, of course, um, our fracture card that we didn't make today, but I showed you how I made it. So there's that one. Um, so I just wanted to share these different ways. Using your glitter paste, uh, you could also, when you do this with your ink, you could also use your clear um, embossing powder and, and heat emboss it so it raises it up. It also gives it a brilliance. Um, so you could use that if you have um, glitter um, embossing powder, you could use that as well. Um, but you're starting out your basic print is all starting out with those um, masks. And so um, here is that fractured card and then of course the gold leafing. So again, I just did wanna share that, you know, these cards are all created with the different masks. Now I want you to, want to invite you to come back on Thursday because we're gonna use some of these other masks to make. Uh, I have an Easter card and I'm gonna show you a different way to use these masks um, and it's gonna involve the die cutting machine. So I know that and then just some different ways to use it. So um, please be sure to come back on Thursday um, and let me know your thoughts, and I just want to thank you for visiting with me. So have a great day, and I'll see you back here on Thursday. Bye now.